Hey everyone, it's Dave here from Banner Badgers. And next up in what's in the box we have, um, if you didn't know already, this is the Pathfinder Absalom City of Lost Omens Beetle and Grimm's. Oh, it's heavy. Gold edition. There we go. It's a little bit of silver foil on there for you. Um, and it, this is this is big. Okay, this is. If you're a fan of Beetle and Grimm's, just like me, you will know that. Um, I love the platinum editions, I love the gold, silver editions from Beetle and Grimm's, which I've done on Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to mention Dungeons and Dragons while we talk about Pathfinder. Um, mostly because we're talking about Beetle and Grimm's. And you, you've probably seen some of their gold boxes before. This is their first Pathfinder box edition. We've done some other things in the past with their character chronicles. Um, but that's for the players. This is for the DM and the groups. Um, this is everything you need for not just Absalom, but you've got extra adventures, you've got the book broken down into booklets, you've got handouts, you've got maps. This thing is an absolute beast. Now, before I get into what this is, because there's a few extras that don't actually fit inside the box, um, I wanted to show you something. So. Bear with me while we go. So in, in all the books, you always get this kind of breakdown. This tells you the contents list, basically, of what's in this box. Now, if we go to the back, I just wanted to bring out, um, as it says, so thank you very much to Beal and Graham, to all their team. Um, you know I love you guys. But it says there, um, oh, I haven't got, wait, wait, let's be pointy sticks. Let's see if I can find one. There we go. Special thanks, Band of Badgers, for the endless support and enthusiasm for all things Pathfinder. Now, I did not know they were gonna do that. Um, I saw that, I was like, wow. Thanks very much, guys. I completely, completely appreciate that. Um, it means a lot. And uh, Pezo, if you're watching, <laughs> send the books over. <laughs> right, anyway, let's get down to this. Aaron, Eric, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, um, now this is the edition. This is out now. Okay, so this is out and available now. Now, uh, for those of you in the UK like me, this will set you back about £270. Um, and it's not just the box. I mean, bear with me while you've got some great artwork on the back. I, I wasn't expecting this extra, extra piece, but that is, is lovely. And Pathfinder is, of course, published by Pezo. But I tell you, I mean, I'm surprised how heavy this is. So this box will set you back £270 plus shipping now i think based on that just on this weight alone of this item i would say it's probably 20 20 quid easy so be aware of what you're purchasing now i mentioned there's stuff that doesn't quite fit in the box so you also get a bag <laughs> so this is this is just a paper bag just for one of the shops that is featured in this book okay the pickled imp antiques and keepsakes you also get, and I love this, look at those. Now that, I think they missed the, missed the trick by not calling it Band of Badgers. I think they could have done that. But look, Badgers, how cool is that? This is a wooden, uh, wooden container for coasters. You get four coasters in here for your players around the table. There you go. Um, all says the same thing. All kind of different wood types. And there it is. It's just kind of a... Laser, laser engraved or laser burned, whatever they call it. But that is absolutely lovely. I was not um, not expecting that, actually. I was I was thinking, I saw some of the pictures and I was expecting they might be probably carved or something, but these are actually really kind of solid, really thick, um, and quite surprisingly nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably have one of those on my desk, I think. But yeah, uh, <laughs> Beal and Grimm's, um, I think, <laughs> You should have done those, or at least, at least Flaming Badger, you could have got on there. I mean, one of your own is a badger. So, um, I think, yeah, Band of Badgers next time, guys. Just, you know, just saying, but that is absolutely lovely. Now, of course, it's a box set, which means it's not just a bag, it's not just coasters. You get the map tube. So, and there are some high quality maps in here. Now, the only difference between this map and the others is part of their kind of the map vault, which I which I absolutely am a fan of. Um, this tube is a bit skinnier. So previous tubes have been like these big kind of fat things, which have been gorgeous. This, this is heavy on its own, um, and there's a ton of maps inside. Now we're gonna get that. If you wanna 
fast forward, I'm gonna start with the main box and then get into this probably at the end. So if you're into the maps, fast forward. If you wanna see what this is, stay there. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of these bits. You've seen them now. And we're straight back into the box. Now, if you did not know, the Absalom City of Lost Omens is already published by Pezo as a book. It's a hardcover book. It costs around $50. So that's probably around 40 to 45 pounds here in the UK. You can kind of pick it up from Amazon or any friendly local game store. Um, and there's quite a few in the UK, so do, uh, do pick them up when you can. It's a 400 page supplement book detailing every nook, cranny and alley of Absalom City itself. So I did not know what to expect. I've seen the pictures, there's some jewelry, you get some coins, there's some handouts, you get all that. The amount of contact content and information in this book alone is incredible. Let alone this box can, contains uh, a reprint, a replica of that book broken down into smaller chapters and modules, which is what kind of Beedle and Grimm's signature piece. But you've got a ton of uh, NPC cards, location cards, all the good stuff that we've seen from Beale and Grimm and that we're used to now seeing, it's kind of like their flavor of what they do, it's in here. And I am so incredibly impressed by the quality of the stuff that's in here that uh, I hope you will be too. Um, so on the front, this is the Ab City of Absalom uh, crest, their watch crest. So let's take a look. It is a big box. I mean, cut, uh, you know, there's no way you can tell on camera of, of, of how thick that is. But it's a nice, big, strong box. Gold on the inside. So let's get rid of that. Put that to one side. Now we've already seen this. We're going to run for it quickly. I'll put. Shall I put the? Where should I put the box? Let's, let's try that. Um, oh, there's something to mention straight away. So I'm going to bring the camera down. As we get into this, so there's been a. a there's been a lot of. Uh, information regarding um, D and D books, Dungeons and Dragons books, when you buy it, and um, D and D Beyond, that you can't have a code to replicate that information. Well, Pathfinder and Pezo have partnered up with Demiplane. They've created a system called Pathfinder Nexus, which basically just imagine D and D Beyond, but Pathfinder, um, and they do other publishers and other content on there as well. If you buy this gold uh, edition, you get a code that will give you free access to that digital download. That digital download is the same price, thereabouts, as the physical book. So it already saves you a 50 quid on, on, that, on the same content. Now, this is their uh, contents book, but as always, you kind of have a note from the guys, and this one, let's, let's just go kind of go through this. Dear Adventure, if you love poetry or even went to high school, then you're probably familiar with Robert Frost's famous musings about a pair of diversion roads in the yellow wood. In the poem, one of these roads is plagued with dragons. The other road, one could also call it a path, is full of dragons as well. But it's also a home to a healthy dose of haikus, telecans, and bog mummies. <laughs> the point of the poem, if we remember it correctly, is that both paths are awesome, full of adventure, and you can totally experience them in equal measure. We're grateful to Pezo for letting us set up shop in the historic city of Lost Omens. This book is a GM's dream, an almost inexhaustible resource of fascinating characters and mysterious places. The opportunity to develop and expand on some of its dark corners has been a true creative joy, and we're excited to share it with you. So warm up your dice, let's walk some new paths together, and stab some bog mummies while we're at it. Because Robert Frost can't clear these roads all by himself. Sincerely, Bill Chorley, John, Matthew, and Paul, otherwise known as Bill and Grimms. So what do you get in this content? Now we're gonna go through, I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything, but let's just take a quick look at what we've got here. So here we have the book in, in all their typical fashion. This is a 400 page book broken down into, into easier to manage modules. So that way you're not lugging in a heavy hardback book in your gaming bag. You can just take the supplement you need. Okay, so that's what you've got a GM screen, which has a lot of references to Absalom. 
specifically kind of maps and locations. You've got all that available. Custom jewelry and artifacts. So we've got the Absalom coin set, which I believe is done. Uh, I need to check on that uh, campaign coins. Um, who are the guys we've had on them before? Uh, Mark and Jackson. Well done, guys. The, the, these stuff looks amazing. I'm dying to have a look at these. Uh, what we got? The Aspis Consortium token. We've got a City Watch badge by, done by Han Cholo. Ar the Arcanamurium pin. The Arcanamurium. Arcanamurium. I can't even say that. I have a trouble with that anyway. <laughs> a set of four wooden Tristar Society coasters and a holder. And the coin of completion. Now, this is a kind of a new thing. They started that with uh, Beale and Grimm's uh, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. And it's, it's, it's in here as well. So this is Beale and Grimm specific. It's not D&D &D or Pathfinder. It's Beale and Grimm. Uh, guys, if you ever get around to it, I'd like to see uh, a holder for that. Poster maps. Three poster maps. We've got the Starstone Owl map. Easy to use district maps. We've got battle maps. Uh, Why well, we got six battle maps there for various stories. Towers from the Warehouse. Now this is where Beadle and Grimm, uh, John Ciclonio, who's done a load of these actually, has written some original short stories, short adventures, maybe possibly one shots. Um, if you have, uh, or a couple of sessions, if you play them online, you could definitely put these in. I say there's three, you can see that it says four, but number three, which says fun and games, is not necessarily an adventure. Okay, that's a, it's, it's a way of handing out information to your players. Should they go there? If you want to give them a clue, uh, as it says, Python needs a clue, take them there, find out. But you've got three adventures. You've got the Ghast Ghast Ghastly Siege, which is second level. Uh, Putrid Prize is fourth level. Crimson Corruption is sixth level. And all of these, you can use the battle maps included in this set. Uh, you've got some in-world handouts. We've got some broadsheets. We've got some flyers, invitations. We've got a bag. We've got some letters. I got loads of things. You got a, 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 so you got a note and a sketch specifically for the bonus adventures. And that's really cool. So we've got some NPC cards. You have a digital code, and there's more. There's so much more. You've got to put it on another side. Look at this. We have location cards. So these location cards are the NPC cards. If you're familiar with Beetle and Grimm's, those are the encounter cards. They've used the same format, but to give you more information. Uh, rumor cards. Now, true or false? Uh, when your players hear an Absalom rumor, hand them a rumor card to hide away and remember. So that's another little kind of useful tool just to kind of uh, do some homebrew content maybe on the fly. Pre-gen character, uh, characters, you've got four ready-to-go characters. Uh, and of course, the box itself, which is which is absolutely amazing. Here is now the team. The team is, seems to be growing. I mean, these are various artists, writers, creatives, um, across the world, because campaign coins are in Australia. Uh, Band of Badgers, here we are. We're in the UK. We are happy to happy to help. We've got to do is get in touch, <laughs> and we'll do whatever we can to, to help you out. By the way, if you haven't yet seen it, there's a quick picture of their Character Chronicles. We also uh, helped out on those as well. So uh, do go check that out. It's on our playlist. Now, that is the contents. Now, let's start digging in. You can see, look, how much stuff is in it and it's still heavy um let's go into the good stuff i've i haven't actually seen i don't think i i own a beetle and grimm's um dice bag or i guess this is a coin bag but a dice bag i like that i might keep that have my, my gaming dice for my evenings um okay so straight away we have sorry about the noise we have this is one of their new completion coins so this is just to say that you've worked out what it is. I like that, look at that. And it's, it's heavily engraved. You can see how raised that is on the camera. That's really nice. That one's come out really clean. I love the logo, actually, for this kind of torn flagpole thing. It's, that detail's come out really well. It's really, really heavily raised. That is really nice. Um, it's quite thick, as you can see. Now on the back, we've got Beedle and Grimm's. Answers on a postcard, please. Factum Perfecto Premium. Let me know. Answers on a postcard. Let's do it the old-fashioned way. 
for if you're watching this on YouTube, but comments below is fine. Got answers on a postcard. So that is, that's nice. That's really nice. I like that. Okay, this one, here we go. Now let's see if we can find out what these actually are. Because it did say there was a bag. Oh, no, that's the pickled imp shopping bag. There we go. That was the one from earlier. I don't see if this one has a particular name. But hey, there's loads of uh, loads of time to work that out. But I do, I do like little dice bags. What's this? So we have, oh, it's the coins. So here are the coins, campaign coins. Mark Jackson. Uh, Mark and Jackson from Campaign Coins actually joined us on our Rise of the Rune Lords campaign. <laughs> they played, they played a couple of giants, and they were amazing. It was a great episode, lots of fun. So uh, now these, um, you, you kind of like penny size, I guess, but really nice. We've got a bronze coin. So you've got the Absalom symbol on one side, on the other side, what have we got? There you go. Someone there. Uh, these are gold. Got to work out now which is which. Those are gold coins. One of these is a silver coin and one of them is a platinum coin. I'm not sure what that one is. Oh, I have to, uh, we might have to come back to those, but yeah, they're nice. Really nice and clean. Campaigns of coins, uh, they also sell, you can you can buy, uh, I bought random coins from Campaign Coins before and uh, my wife bought me some stuff as a prize, as a present, as a prize um, a couple of years ago. And that's how I found out about them. They make incredible stuff. They also do uh, sort of pins and jewelry and stuff as well. Most of their stuff is, is kind of coins. But uh, yeah, that is really nice. I like that. Little baggie, get rid of that one. What else we got? Now from Hand Show though, this is, again, sorry about the noise. This is, I guess it's the City Watch badge, that kind of thing, the, the badge. And it's kind of, it's, it's actually dented. That's not, coloring that is actually that's got dents in it it's been it's filled with um like a, a not a clear resin but like a a, taint, a a dyed resin maybe that's really nice heavy thick two pins to hold that one on if you want to wear that quite sharp Lovelies. I like that. Very nice. Pancholo, uh, these designs are from. And some of these, because Bean and Grimm often do some of the jewelry pieces separately, you might be able to pick these up. I don't know yet. I haven't checked. Again, sorry about the noise. There we have. And which way around is that going to go? That way, I think. Look at that. Really shiny. And again, is that? That might be a kind of a similar resin in a lovely color. I mean, look at that. It's a great little pin. Oh, right, hold on. Is that the way right around? I'm not sure. It's just Pazo that way. Or is it that way? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's supposed to be that way. Yep, that looks good. I like that. And it's solid as well. It's not like a Christmas cracker plastic this is it's a uh, feels metallic now this is heavy oh, look at that. He, is this the aspis consortium now this if you can see look there are ridges on the outside yeah, and that is heavy. I mean, that's like, that's paperweight heavy. I and mean, we have reverse. We've got a silver and black snake e eating itself, figure of eight. And if we flip it, we have the reverse colors. It, it looks like it's white, but that's silver on the inside. And then the black snake. And you can see how detailed and how thick that is. I mean, that's a thick piece there. That is lovely. I like that. I have to find out what it's for. 
But I, whoops, I do like that. Well, that's not going to go back in there. Right, now, oops, got something stuffed down the side. We have some rumor cards. Now, I'll just get my trusty scissors. <laughs> I don't have a fat, I need to get a fancy sword or something. What do you reckon? Pezo, can you send me a, some kind of, um, I don't know, Pezo shurikens, something like that. I like, you know, be able to use them. Uh, rumor cards. GM, there's a note to the GM, okay. GM, hand to your players the first time they hear one of these rumors found on pages 86 to 87. Ah, okay. I like it. It's a very nice reference when I do things like that. Oh no, oh look, rumor number one. So on the backs, you got rumor, rumor number one, rumor number two, and they're all different. Look, different styles. I thought it was just going to be like a typed card. These are so nice. Wow. I was definitely not expecting that. Look at these. Um, they are normal playing card size. Probably the same kind of thickness, rounded corners. Really good quality. Really nice. Uh, different colours, different fonts, as if it's like handwritten. Really good selection. Don't know how many actually in here. But that is nice. Wow. I'm impressed, guys. I like that. One thing I think that is missing... So in, in uh, previous boxes, we've seen, um, and, this, and, and in D&D, &D, like the starter box and the essentials box, some of the expansion boxes, um, if you've seen like the wilderness D&D &D shield, you get, um, it's only a very thin card, which is the downside, but something you can push out and make your own box, because now I've taken out the wrappers, it's just loose. So I'm gonna put elastic band around them, but it'd be nice to have a little box to keep them nice in. So some of the Beedling Grim stuff, uh, for example, Witch Knight, there are is a magic item deck, and that comes already comes in a box. And then you get a, uh, a not, not exactly an NPC, but like a, like a role play deck in Witch Knight. And that is, um, it doesn't come with a box. And it was the only kind of thing because I've got to, I've got to find some elastic bands from somewhere. So anyway, that is those i like those those are good right so here we go we have two packs of these and when i say packs i mean packs they are not holding back on you okay i know 300 quid can be expensive but if you want to invest in your games you want to invest in your table get your players to chip in it's the easiest thing you can do but let's let's open this up um Everyone's going, no, what are you doing? I'm going to open these somehow. This is why I need those blades or a lightsaber or a sword. I've just got junk going over there now. Okay, so we are in. Let's have a look. All right, so this is the location. It's a location deck. I think yes so these are all the kind of sites that you can see now is it, if you're again if you're a fan or let's move the camera out a little bit if you're a fan of be the grim stuff then you will know um it has the same format this is a card that allows you to put over your dm screen or your gm screen and you have the picture on one side for the players and on the other side for the gm you have some extra information now with the encounter cards, it, you get all the stats and everything else. But this is kind of sometimes too handy to have. You got a little bit of detail where it is on the in the city. Background details, NPCs to find in this area. That's really nice. And there are a picture there, everyone can see what the building looks like. I'm just gonna have a quick th flick through. Oh hello. That looks nice, isn't it? 
Let's bring that back down. Right. Again, the art, the Pathfinder artwork has always blown me away. I've been a fan. Oh, ooh, I don't know when was that. Uh, I think late 2010. I think I got into Pathfinder, which was first edition. They're now onto second edition. Second edition has been out for a few years now, um, and their artwork has always been top notch. I cannot fault them on the artwork. The story is ranged from everything. You've got sci-fi, horror, fantasy. Everything is kind of high-end. And it is... Cool. I mean, look at that. That's a gorgeous location. The Temple of Lost Coins. Once a castle... Here you go. Once a castle-like church dedicated to worship of the dwarven deity Trud. Fortified building was... For many decades, a centre of the dwarven community within the coins. Oh, I don't know. Again, it's just, it's just yeah. Obviously, you don't have to. The this box set and the original book that the box set is based on is not is not an adventure. This is a supplement. This is stuff to help you and aid you in your storytelling. It is very much a GM's tool. Or a toolbox of tools and definitely well worth picking up if you can or if you're a daddy like me daddy's day is coming just saying it's father's day soon just go all out and ask because sooner you think your birthdays and christmas oh wow i mean look at that what is this bone glutton pit Oh, I've just been reading some of that. I won't spoil it. Look at that. Thraga. Ghoul High Priestess. Look at that. That's amazing. And these, these aren't encounters. Okay, these are still locations. Look at these. Just gives you a great sense of the architecture in, in Pathfinder. All the different styles. There is so much work that goes into Pathfinder that it's not just stories. They they really are creating. Is that badges? The fierce stripe. There you go. <laughs> I knew I'd find it. A, t uh, a gnome Chesney of House Uriel runs the fierce stripe, a tightly packed shop offering all things badger related. Now is there you go. Members of the Tri Stripe Society flock to the shop for monthly meetings and tea to discuss the latest news and badger shows. Look, ah, oh, Pathfinder, Eric, just need to rename it. Yeah, Band of Badgers. Uh, what else have we got? Adventurers are sometimes hired for various badger related missions. It's exactly what we do. If you want to come and play on some of our campaigns, all you have to do is get in touch. And join the band of badgers. Uh, badger related missions such as acquiring rare and far away badgers, recovering lost or kidnapped badgers, or just helping out around the shop. Oh, love it. So I wonder if you go there and you get to use your coasters. <laughs> I love it. If only they, it was actually based on us. That'd be great. I love this. Look at this. Great and beautiful artwork. Um, which you know, you know I'm a fan of artwork. If you've watched any of our other videos, you would know. By the way, um, if you like this video, please do like and subscribe and share it around. And if you like the way I'm doing this, let me know if you prefer this. Sometimes we do um, a smaller window and you have artwork down the side, but because this thing is so big, I wanted to go kind of full screen and show you as much of the product as you can. I mean, this, look at this. Look at that detail in that artwork. And look, I mean, I don't know how many are here. I don't know if it actually says. Let's have a quick look. No, it doesn't say. But there's a vast amount of just playable content. And, you know, you can homebrew this if your players need to go there. You say, this is what the building looks like. On you, on you truck, guys. On you truck. 
Look at that. What is that? Oh, it's the fl oh, it's the flotsam graveyard. Ooh, that's a great piece. I'm not going to tell you any spoilers. You're going to have to adventure there and find out for yourselves. Now that, I don't know how many was there, but that's a good chunk. That that is a good chunk, and that's all just artwork with all kind of background stories. Here we have some more. These should be uh, characters. Am I going to be able to get in here? Yep. Okay. I don't need the scissors all the time, but you can see, look, we've got a bag of handouts as well. So let's have a look at these. Who is this, first of all? It's the Cyan Lord, Salido of House Marilla. Yeah, great artwork. So nothing on the inside, because it, again, it's just something that's supposed to go uh, over the GM screen. I mean, look at this. Is this going to be head to toe of all these characters? I mean, not only is it great, you know, NPC art, that's fine. But you can use that as your character art. Who cares what you're going to be doing um, in your own... Your, oh, look, that's scary. Um, in your own campaign, use the artwork and say, look, that's my character. That's my, that's my player character. Now, she... She looks scary. There's, there's definitely something demoral. Uh, a mother jackal. By nature, lay back and lazy. It's ancient Leng. Oh no, it's a Leng. Leng, all sorts of divine existence, a pinnacle of macabre luxury. <sighs> she shops at the Grand Bazaar. Oof. Wow. What does he got? Is that? Yeah. Look, clockwork bird. Fantastic. And who is that? Is that going to be the barber? Seriously? Doctor? A nine, nine foot tall troll? Was originally the test subject of an alchemist named Dr. Benzi Skull. When the alchemist was murdered, the troll took over his name and his occupation and has proven to be better at it than his predecessor. Today, Dr. Skull is the leader of the Bloody Barber's Thieves Guild, but he's almost never been seen by any of his closest allies. The doctor provides the Bloody Barber's with alchemical items and disgusting potions that enhance regeneration, while the guild provides him with experimental victims, expensive ingredients, and connections outside the city. Wow. Talk about plot content. You don't need to. You just It's all here. That looks amazing. Oh, city guard. Who is this? Simo of Winsall. Oh, for one. Again, look at the art. Just artwork is so nice. I've got too many cards in my hand now. Here we go. Let's put those over there. Uh, oh, there are doggies. I don't know a city watch. Something about the city watch is the agents of Edge Watch. Check that out. It's a Pathfinder story. Really, really good. And we've got some more Pathfinder campaigns. Right now, at the moment, where are we? April 2022, as I record this, we are playing Pathfinder Malevolence. Uh, but we have, oh, wow. We have more, more Pathfinder coming. We have some really big Pathfinder coming. Some seriously huge Pathfinder. But, uh, that's a story for another time. He kind of looks like old Hulk. If you know what I'm talking about. I can't remember his name. Wow. Oh, I've got two. Are they the same or are they twins? Nope. I've got a duplicate. Hey, hey. Okay, don't mind that. Look at this, so much. Wow. Uh. Zuska, the Goblin King of Absalom. <laughs> Look at that. One of the best things about Pezo is their goblins. They're 
Oh, it's a skin sore. So Paul, who is at, uh, is a member of Beetle. Well, a bit, well, it's not exactly a spoiler. If you, if you, if it doesn't matter. So Paul at Beetle and Grimm, um, he was our skin sore man when we played Rise of the Rune Lords. There you go. The skin sore cult. Now, who is that? Now we get a few headshots now. Headshots, headshots. Got a nice, got a very kind of a Stephen Strange. Jonas Flack Fatter. A bear of a man. He's a high priest of Black Finger Temple. Mm. Oh, wow, look at that. Incredible artwork. I wasn't expecting this. I mean, after so many, so many, um, look at that. So many head to toes, and then you also, oh, ugh. also getting, um, wee. also getting these headshots as well. So many. That is incredible. I mean, just vast amounts of information and stuff for you and your players and your gaming table, just in general. Especially if you love homebrew. Any of this stuff, and you can use this anywhere. I mean, let's be honest. It doesn't matter what rule set you're using. You can, any of this, you know, this, you could use that in Call of Cthulhu. Just saying. Just, I know it says Pathfinder. Don't be a stickler for the rules. They are there as a guide only. I don't listen to the rules. I do what I, do what I want. Why? Because I'm a badger. That's why. <laughs> Let's have a look inside. Is this? Okay, let's just put a bit of cardboard on the back to keep everything nice. And I love, with Bill and Grimm's, the handouts have always been very varied. It's a huge variety of things, shapes, sizes, textures, which is one of the best things about them. It's not just you know, the same handwritten font on a bit of brown parchment paper. You get a lot more now let's try and see what we've got here and we're still in the box we're only halfway in the box look become a citizen of absalom help us build a better city and enjoy the protections and benefits of the city at the center of the world join the guards or serve the councils and become a citizen today what's that say actual number of years of service required to obtain for citizen a discretion at hiring a council office okay there you go Wow. Wow. We'll break down of all the officials anyway. What else have we got? Ooh, this feels nice. Hidden dinner. Ooh. That's nice. I like it. Do you want to race? Now accept the application for the scatter. Yeah, nice little flyer. This looks nice. Look at this. You are cordially invited to the only event that matters. Lord Sinar Daedalus. Second annual Grand Masquerade Ball. Your quality will be judged by your costumes quality. Wow. That one's slightly, uh, you probably, well, you might be able to see it in the light there. It's textured. That's nice. <laughs> the, t the time is nigh. <laughs> Join the movement. That's cool. I like that. Storytelling contest. Hmm. We're up to ten gold measures. That's nice. This one's, this one's quite thick. 
very um you could probably still rip it but first off it's coated what have we got here Ooh. now is that going to be a cipher look at this though look, it looks like a ring some stuff going on it's obviously something going on that's some that's some baddies it looks like some bad, isn't it? It's probably, it might just be like a, a fancy jewelry shop. But here we have a broadsheet. Uh, the broadsheet is like a copy of the local newspaper. Uh, there we go. You can see even the, the detail on this, though. Look, it's really nice. Missing children. Oh. And then we got, we open it up. Mistrix sows, Mistrix sows discontent. We have the missing books. What's that about? That one says it's Modius. We got Casters protect Abs Absalom's future. Edwin's eats the golden serpent. The Disorder of Numbers, not for the faint of heart. Ooh, Illegal Gore. Hello. Oof. So, there's your broadsheet. Now, you can obviously use that, not just as an aid, but if you if you go spend the time and read through it, uh, there's, some, there's some clues there. And we'll get here. Oh, there's more. So this is the mark of the Pathfinder Society. Pathfinder Society Grand Convocation. Don't miss out on the event of the year where legends are made or exposed. Listen to tales of exploits from the far reaches of Galarian. Or recite your own. We are Pathfinders. Explore. Report. Cooperate. Now, Bela Grimm's also commissioned a fantastic, uh, not exactly, not, not, it's kind of like a trinket, not exactly a piece of jewelry, but they, it was metal and it was like a green a resin or glass was poured into this shape. Looks, I didn't get one. Um, looks absolutely amazing, but it's one of the, it's one of the things. And it's a, I'd imagine if you're, if you're, if you picked up the Avernus box, uh, it's like the size of a soul coin, probably the size of that. I think that's what I put in my head. That's how much I. That's how I think it is anyway. But um, yeah, it's really really cool kind of symbol. What have we got here? An uncouth rebel. Now this marrow suck. There we go. So this is this is a letter that you can use in one of the uh, uh, one of the original stories that uh, the Beale and Grimm teams team have written now this is nice this is very nice these are the pre-gen characters really thick paper um really really nice so this is aster Devereux. he's a champion level one um where are they we've got a human Speed uh, and it, again, if you're familiar with uh, D and D, and you haven't yet made the jump to something else, D and D tends to be the gateway, and then uh, then so you want something more. This is something more. But you you know lots of familiarities, and lots of new things as well. Doesn't take long to learn. It really, really doesn't. And. For 30 quid, you can pick up their um, the starter box. There's a Pathfinder second edition starter box that you can get, and it is amazing. You get a huge double-sided full-color map. It is incredible, plus all the, the tokens you need, all the enemies, you get dice, you get everything. This is nice. I like this. 
I like pre-gen characters. Okay, so it gives us something to start with. And then if you're if you if you have your character chronicles, you could then copy this into that if you wanted to, or even just a bit of paper. You can also download blank uh, character sheets directly from Pezo.com. Um, or if you happen to be using Nexus, Pathfinder Nexus on Demiplane, you can just copy those details in there. In fact, if you uh, with the digital code, these might also be there. I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Put some useful information in here. Uh, okay, so here we got. We've got four NPCs, uh, not NPCs, pre-gen characters. So Aster Devereaux, who's a champion. We have a bard, Mikkel, Mikkel Splat, who's a gnome, Mickey, Mickey Splat, <laughs> a gnome bard. Okay, whoa, loads of stuff on here. You've got the cantrips, you've got your spells, all the equipment, everything is just written out for you. So all you've got to do is copy that into something else. Again, a blank piece of paper just by the side of this and just Take this, roll next to it. That's all you need. We have Tesserel, who is a wizard, level one. And it gives you um, descriptions of the pre-selected spells that you have. Spells continued. There's your equipment, feats and abilities, and your background. Really, really nice. Uh, Mickey, well, we've done that one. And Ig. <laughs> Ig the rogue. There we go. What is Ig? Is Ig anything? Ig is a goblin. Tesserol is an elf. So we've got a human, an elf, a gnome, and a goblin. That is really nice. And this bit is just a blank piece of card just to keep everything nice and straight so it doesn't fold. And they don't bend when you put them back. Because they're all different sizes, and they, as you saw, they came shoot wrapped. Which the only problem with that is, once you take them out, it's harder to put them back. Yet another piece of card as a reinforcement. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, look. See, this is that symbol. This is the symbol you see. And, this, and they've actually made this. Um. Okay. Right. So this is Towers from the Warehouse. This is original content created by uh, Beale and Grimms. Let's just turn it that way around. So it will work better maybe okay, let's have a proper look at this now I mean, look at that so we've got crimson corruption by john Ciccolini, future prize ah but just like catalan fun games john Ciccolini and ghostly ghastly siege by john Ciccolini. well done john you have been busy you have been incredibly busy. Well done, you. So, Crimson Corruption, how many... So this is... So you've got the standard kind of things. If Again, if you're used to... If you've never seen Pathfinder before, it's great. If you've seen Pathfinder before, because I keep saying if you've never seen it before, but if you are, if you're a fan of Pathfinder like I am, you won't be put off by the way that these are laid out. Again, They've done it in the same format. So this is original Beagle and Grim Contact. It's the same format as what we've seen before. Especially those kind of short stories. You know, the uh, the free RPG day. It's that kind of uh, that kind of level. So here we have, they're going to be using two of the maps. And here's an example of the maps you get in the tube. Remember the tube map I showed you at the start? We'll get through to that in a bit. But, wow. That is, that is nice, look at that. So you've got, where are we? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven pages. And that's just one short adventure. Now, you could do that in a one shot. Um, if you're playing online, you might wanna do it over a couple of sessions. Sometimes online can be a bit, trust me, I do it a lot, can be a bit draining. But yeah, that was great, that was really nice. So the next story is Putrid Priors. And it says here, so it says at the top here, 
This adventure is designed for four fourth level characters and utilizes the following resources. The Grand Bazaar battle map, the Verdurous Torsion battle map, and Tariel's sketch handout. So there's a Grand Bazaar. Get a breakdown. This is nice. Oh my God. Look at that map. That is gorgeous. Definitely. I'm. Ho I'm assuming. I'm hoping that that is going to be that that is going to be in the map tube as well. But that one has like what's well, like Obviously, it's cracked. But that has water just pouring in through the middle. I just. I was just trying not to read some of the stuff. I'm trying not to uh, spoil it for you. Um, so that's okay. Funner games. Funner games is just adventure background. Okay, so this is as I, I was kind of right. This is not an adventure itself. This is just a way for you to uh, give the players additional information. But again, look at that. Look at the breakdown of this. It's great. And the Garcy Siege. There you go. You get the breakdown again. What things you need. I like that. Very handy to have. Really? Oh. There's um there's um there's Absalom for you. It's big. It's a huge city. So that is oh, it's, it's, there's adventure. So that is um just uh, some short, very short, unique adventures, and they're calling them now Towers from the Warehouse. Really, really nice. Um, the content is good. It's a mixture of because they they all kind of take it some most of the time. Although John's had a go. <laughs> done most of them they have uh, they take it in turns and each one has different writing styles um, if you haven't already um, at Justice his writing stuff is, is great uh, Bill does some some great stories as well Charlie's is that is fantastic so do have do kind of like pick up their stuff um, so here this is a bag of their modules but I've just seen below this we have some more bits so I'm going to come back to this this is the 400 page hardback book split down into modules all broken out so let's uh i'll come back to that if i can i want to check out the dm screen i'm a big fan of dm screens the beard and green ones are always portrait designers and this one's upside down so always portrait let's try and go a little bit bigger so we get that in camera and she's looking scared she's got pathfinder Bill and Grams. On the inside, look at this. So tons of information here. So this is specific to, to Absalom. This isn't like just general rules or information. This, yeah, we well got, actually, I suppose you do have some simple information on the left there. Climb and travel speed, difficulty checks. You've got, and then the rest is uh, Absalom specific military guilds and unions over here we've got factions noble houses and here you have a guide some of the points so it's kind of wrapped over the so here and here they've got numbers so it goes all the way from 1 to 13 and they, those are the different quarters or districts in Absalom city itself you can see it there Really, really nice. Oh. Well, I, you know, I do like the logo. It's really nice. Something that's grown on me. Um, okay. Now on the artwork, it's whoop, on the artwork. Let's see if we can get this in camera. This is what is it called? Rope Town Bridge or something? But anyway, it's collapsed, and everyone is falling to their doom. Or are they? I was going to say are they, but that one definitely is because that one's not attached to anything. So they're a goner. Oh, 
That is cool. I like I like that a lot. So I'll fold that back up. There we go. And what we've got here, this is, and now we're at the bottom of the box. This is a folio. Is this the quick handouts? It is. So this should be all of the, they are, they're not, you can make notes on them, but basically they're, they are single sided. The ascendant, oh, it's in the middle, the ascendant court. Coins. Oh no, it is actually the. Is it? Or is it not? Yeah, it's just one part of the city, that. So then you've got the coins, the docks, Eastgate, Foreign Quarter, Ivy District. So it is just a breakdown. There's no information on the back, there's no write ups. That's for you to make your own notes. So that's something for you, the GM, to keep behind the screen depending on what district they're in. And who knows when your players are going to visit Absalom. It's always a nice reference though. Puddles, Westgate, Wise Quarter. Oh, what's this? Uh, outskirts. I think it's just a breakdown of the... Um, I'm going to say it was a breakdown, but look at that one. Fort Tempest. Starwatch Keep. And there's Lanty Keep. Oh, you see the tunnels underneath. But those are nice. I like that. Good quality. They are on. Um, it's not. A, it's not. I don't think it's laminate, but it's definitely coated in something. It's a thin, thin card. That's nice. Okay, we finally got to the bottom of the box. So we have that. We have the GM screen. We're gonna come back to the box. Let's get everything. Whoops. Let's get everything back in so it's nice and tidy. We have all, whoops, all of our handouts can go back in. All of our cards can go back in. So remember, you've got uh, location cards, encounter cards. Do those half and half. We have our rumor cards, and I'm going to need to get elastic band or something for them. So I'm going to go back in. There we go. And all of our coins. We have all our coins. We've got some rubbish there. Let's just take that out. Don't need that now. There we go. Put that back in there. Bit of rubbish. Coin. There we go. And that one. That one survived. Wow, and then we have this the content sheet goes in there as well. Wow, I told you it's big. Then we got this. Now this, I'm not going to go through all of them because there's 400 pages. It's a 400 page hardback book. So I'm not going to go through all of that. Let's get in closer. I'm just more curious to see how they've broken down the book. And this is actually a book I haven't bought yet. I got a few of the other books instead, but um This is this is nice. This is lovely. And straight away that's quite thick. So this is Absalom pages one to eighty nine. So it's nice, again, it takes out some of the weight from your gaming bag with what you need. Um, let's try and get a better view for you, there we go. Because it is big. These are normal book sized. Just gonna have a flick through, just see what else is in it. Oh, it's the same layout as well as Pathfinder. If you're familiar with Pathfinder, you will like these. So everything is written out. It's the same as the hardback, you just uh, yeah, so it tells you all the contents. So this is table contents, Absalom City Guide. And look at that artwork. That is, that is so nice. Don't you want to be a kick-ass wizard? Just beautiful. The book 
ships always are. I don't think. I mean, I've had stories that I've not uh, didn't suit my tastes, but all of their books have just been an absolute joy to read because they of the visual impact. There you go. Some note sections at the back. Breakdown of some shops. Break down some rumours. They might be the same rumours. Don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, as the rumour cards. Temple Index. Okay, a lot of hot work. And you can see this is, you know, they, they replicated all the artwork for you. So you don't need to, you don't obviously, you don't need to have the, uh, this book. If you have the, the NPCs, you just need their card. Oh, let's go. oh no, I didn't know they had their own badge. Skin saw cult. And there you go, look, Pathfinder Society. Join the Pathfinder Society and get yourself, get yourself the badge of honor. From, I got a little pin one actually. I got a pin one from Campaign Coins. So nice, yeah, really, really nice. This will be a pleasure to read. There's no way I'm going to stick all all of this information in my head, but it's handy. Yeah, it was a badger. It's handy to have. And what, so is it broken down into chapters or is it just pages? Absalom and the Guide to the City. And then we have the Ascendant Court. I love this artwork. This is just beautiful. So that's 90 to 105, much, much smaller. Ah, okay, the coins. So they have, they've done us flip books by the looks of it. Have they? Yes, they have. Oh, now that's nice. I didn't know they were doing that. There's the inside of the thing. You got there. There's a the faded view. There's a full color view. Grand Bazaar. And then, so what you can do, you got that, and you flip it over, and you got the next set of pages. So this is the other district, the coins. So you've got. A breakdown of everything in that area. At least, you know, people and places of note, really. If you want to take them to specific locations, you can. All right, that's really nice. I didn't know they were doing flip books. I like that a lot. And you go to docks, flip it over, Eastgate. What does it say? Foreign Quarter and the Ivy District. Okay, you can see you can see all the information there. Nice. Here we got Petal District and the pre oh look the Precipice Quarter. Let's have a look at the artwork on that one. Wow. Not exactly a place you want to go on your holidays, is it? But it is a place you might want to go on an adventure. Or, or maybe not. <laughs> wow. Oh, there's a note section in the middle as well. That's nice. We've got Puddles and Westgate. Statue Street. One of the best things is that there's always uh, rumors and mysteries in Pathfinder. The Wise Quarter and the Undercity. Ooh. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to say. This one's got a, uh, a map in there. Look. Look at that. That's nice. Again, these books are not no, is not extra content. This is just a replication of the hardcover that you can buy for 
50 quid um, from your gaming store. You can also buy it direct from, from Pezo, or you can buy a PDF. You don't have to buy the physical copy, but so again, this is the replica uh, broken down into smaller, more manage manageable um, modules. Really nice. Oh, and then you've got, we've got more of these ones. No, so these are NPCs uh, A to A to Mo, <laughs> and these are Mu to Z. So it's just going to be a breakdown of the same. Yep. So I'd imagine these might probably be a breakdown of the same. Yep. Because we've got a double of that one might be a breakdown of all of the people we saw. So again, it, this is this is all in the original book. This is just a breakdown of the information. And what B. Lingrim does is pull a lot of that out. So while these are replicate, maybe you didn't have the, uh, the card you needed, but you can still find the information needed if you have this book with you. There's a huge amount of detail in these. Huge amount of detail, right? So that is one big, massive box. As I said, this is in the UK. Um, this is two hundred and seventy pounds worth of collectible gear in here. And I'm going to take my cards out because that is obviously, oops, not going to work. My room of cards, which have just spilt everywhere. This is why you need a box, guys. Right. Put them in there. So that is great. It all goes back in the box. Now there's more. <gasps> there's more. We have this. Now there is no way that this is going to fit under the camera. But let's see what I can do. Let's have a look. Let's have a look, see how many, ooh, look. Quite a few in there. It is quite, quite heavy. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, ooh, nothing else in there, it's just the tube. Let's get rid of that. Put my coasters. What we got? Oh wow, and these are, I mean, straight away the quality of that. That's thick. Let's have a look. Wow. How many are there? Let's turn it this way. Here we go. Right. Oh, that's the stone star, star stone aisle. And this is like a thicker paper. Um, I'm not sure how high this will go, look. There we go. Maybe A2 in size, this one. Starstone Isle, 50 miles across. Well, 50 miles per that bit. Um, uh, Tyrant's Grasp. If you're familiar with Pathfinder, you know what I'm talking about. No spoilers. And that's nice. That's one sided. But that is nice. Try and somehow keep them nice. Now, wow, look at the quality of this. They are the other way around. I mean, wow. This is about A2 in size, I guess. Um, possibly A1. If you're, if you know, like, like a flip chart pad. It's that kind of size. This is huge. The detail is incredible. Let me see if I can bring you in on, on some of this. Look. Look at the detail. It's just, that's a leaf floating in the water. Look at the colour. Let's try and get you some of that. Look. One inch grid equals five feet, as we as we know. It's some kind of well, what is this place? This is the but this is the Grand Grand Bazaar. Look at the colours. Look. 
Got a gradient on that. That looks beautiful. Massive compass. I like that. Look at that sword. Well, that is a huge, huge, huge map. Is this double sided? It is. So let's take that back out there. So that's one side, and on the other side, it's double sided. It's very thick. It's um. Again, if you know Beetle and Green, uh, Beetle and Grimm's uh, poster tubes. They have been on uh, more coarser, like um, like cartridge paper, art paper. This is super smooth and it's thick. It's not as I don't, it's not as thick as card, but it's kind of getting there. Sorry about the noise. Uh, this is the Crimson Coin Tavern. That is a looks to be a fighting pit. There's the door. You've got some extra space outside. There's a building next door. You don't need to see that. And you've got the outside lights and the outside pathway. Look. So if you want to sneak in the back door or the window, your characters can do that. And you've got uh, like tables and chairs. So, and they've actually put a chair in each five foot square. And you've got some extra tables down this side. It's so big, I can't get it under the camera. You've got the kitchen. There's the bar. There's the storeroom. There's the, I guess the liquor entrance, the wine, the, the beer cellar, the kitchen. You've got another back door here. Takes you out into some steps. This, I think, is a dock. Again, it's so big. There's a dock at the bottom of the page. I just can't, <laughs> I can't get it under the camera. No, look at that. I don't think it's going to fit, but. Take my word for it, there is a dock. And again, all these maps are decorated. They've got, they've got edging on the side, look. Look at that, that's really nice. On this side, you've got it. It goes all the way around, look. Really nice. I'm impressed, guys. I am very impressed. That is really nice. Now, if you uh, if you fancy seeing more Beetle and Grimm, we've just started our Wild Beyond the Witchlight Beetle and Grimm campaign using everything. We're doing it online, but we're using all miniatures and things. So check that out if you're interested. YouTube.com slash Band of Badges. This is the Sewer, Sewer Dragon's Lair. I now kind of, I know, I know you can't see this, but I'm literally reaching over um, as far as I can. This is a uh, theatre, an underground theatre. Which the sewer dragons, who are a bunch of kobolds, are living in. Again, highly detailed. There's so much going on. And you can see, like this light effect, that's not my light. That's just, it's like it's colored differently. It is so nice. And the other side, oh, here's that map. So here's the one I was interested in, and it's here, look at that. And again, the camera does not do this justice. This is the Verdurous tor Torsion. Verdurous Torsion. This is two pieces of land. We've got some kind of building here. Uh, looks like a castle or something. One inch is five foot, yeah. And it's cracked. And this water up here, it's just streaming, gushing through it all the way down. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, to playing this. Band of Badgers, if you didn't know, is a social club. And here in the UK, we play in a big or we, we used to, playing a big mansion house, you know, global pandemic, that's basically stopped us, but we're hoping, we were hoping last year to get back, didn't happen, 2022, we're hoping to get back, but, we're, it's down to, it's down to people returning really, if they want to, COVID is still, very much a real thing, so we're going to keep on trying, and we'll keep on staying online, for now, Okay, so that is, that is super nice. 
And we got more. Look at look at this. What is this? This is the Terag's Fungi Farm. You've got some kind of pocket of water over here. A cave, cavern passageway, which splits off into different rooms. Um, some cracks, some crevices, some tables, tables and chairs here. There's another room down here. I think it's just off camera. You can't really see it. We've got all of this. It's a lift going up or down, I'm not sure. Our, our room up here. This is a sewer maybe. A sewer entrance. Don't think it's a stream. And you've got ways of getting across. You've got a passageway up here. Well, uh, a footpath, sorry, not a passageway. But look, again, that is not reflections of my light. That is, look, that is, that's on the print. Gorgeous. Really, really nice. Uh, what else we got? And on the back, we have, oh, I just hit everything. Hit the camera, hit the mic. This is the board boardwalk. So this is part, uh, is, so from the extra content, Tales from the Warehouse, this is a place where you can give your players help and advice. And they can have some fun games at the same time. Here you've got a carousel. And uh, what else have we got? Looks like some kind of gambling tent down here. This one says, test your strength. I'm not gonna say Calliope or Calliope, Calliope, Calliope? I don't know. I'm having trouble with that witch light at the moment. I don't know how you say it. But it's a thing that makes music. <laughs> there you go. I don't know what this is. It's some, is that a roller coaster? Was that the that tunnel of love? <laughs> I think it's the tunnel of love. <laughs> but hey, go on the tunnel of love. Find out a clue about your adventure. And look, you get some water up here as well. So I think that's about, is that that's the pier, isn't it? They call it a boardwalk. I call it a pier. The uh, what's this? This is a pub. The infinite tankard. That's nice. Okay. Hold this up. And what we got here? So this is, this is this, this is huge. So those maps you've just seen, this is bigger. This is way bigger. This is the city map, but. That's only, this is the right half <laughs> of the map. You'd have to turn it down this way. And this is very close to, to being A1 in size. I don't know how else to explain it, but I think that's A1 in size. This is one half, and there are three pieces of this map. So if I move this, now is that gonna connect to the other half? Yes, no. Kind of. Almost there. I don't think it does actually. Because look, we've got ascendant court and ascendant court. Wires and wires. And they overlap slightly. And you've got coin, but you can't see it because it says at the top of the screen, but it says the coins twice. So I think, I don't think it's something you're supposed to put together. I think it is just one massive piece. So you've got, you've got the right half. And then, if I'm right, we have the left half. All the plastic's gone everywhere now. And then, so what's the what's the next map? Oh, okay. Right. So here we have. Okay. So those last two posters you saw. That was definitely the right hand and the left hand. This one is a slightly smaller version of the of the city, but it includes, I'm gonna have to roll this to get it under the camera, but it includes the Flotsam Graveyard and Pilot Island. And then you've got the bottom there. So it depends on how much detail your players are going to need. I, I think for me, I would probably use this. But if you want to zoom in and, and find 
certain roads and things how in depth your um how in depth the stuff is going to be i think that could, could be incredible now what you can't see and i'm not sure if this is going to pick it up let's try is you see those kind of green bits in the water that is why it's called the flotsam graveyard because each of those is a sunken ship so yeah all of that are sunken boats you can see it when the, when the light picks up on it there's a huge amount of boats and who knows from how many years are in there I think we need to go on a flotsam adventure. I think that's definitely going to be on the cards for my uh, for my players. So there we go. That that's all rubbish. <laughs> that plus that, and you saw the badger coasters. You saw the bag. That is a huge amount of gaming. If you're if you're if you're someone like me who loves using handouts and high quality handouts, who does a lot with their players, especially around the table. It's great that we're kind of finally getting back to our gaming tables. I completely encourage you to get this. Right now, with our Witchlight, Beetle and Grim Witchlight campaign, we are trying to use these handouts online for the very first time and trying to find new ways of using them and bringing them to players who can't physically touch them but um, a new way of showing those. So do check that out if you're interested. If you are back to your gaming tables, if you want something new, and even if you just ignore that, this is quality items that you can use on anything. You can just reuse it as much as you wish. I can't stress that enough. Don't just kind of look at the table. Don't be with those people who just go, look at the rules and can't change it. Don't just look at the title and go, I can only use it in the Absalom. You can use it in any world use these maps on anything don't kind of limit yourself with these things um again it's a heavy box <laughs> really really impressed beeling grim you've done it again absolutely amazing fantastic a beautiful box <sighs> and after that i'm gonna go and get a cup of tea now so if you like that please do like and subscribe please do share it with your friends and your colleagues and your people around your gaming table Stay safe with whatever you do, and hopefully, I'll, I'll stop dropping stuff on the floor. Hopefully, I will see you again soon. And until that time, be safe, people. Bye-bye.